If you're not mad already, you could be mad about racism or sexism, socialism, communism, Trump, media bias, social media censorship, gun rights, coronavirus, hate speech, Washington pedophiles, pro athletes, political statements, job layoffs, Hillary trials, gender confusion, China, Russia, riots in major cities, BLM, Antifa, ISIS, abortion, political correctness. Holy smokes. I already said I'm not doing the ad with him up there. I don't know what you're talking about. Do you really think you're hidden? Shh, shh. No, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be gray man up here. No, 1,000% sure every one of them saw you. You were... I'm up here being a, like a hidden tactical proficient and I won't have the element of surprise. The gray man, right? If I'm the, the gray, gray man. man. The gray man is a metaphor, and it means you're not like we're in multicam and mole and lobby and open carrying in public. It. Mi I got a sword. Get away from me. I w this was gonna be a respectable ad. I was gonna tell you to shop Sportsman's Guide and you can save money on firearms and firearm accessories and hunting gear, and it was gonna be nice. I was gonna say use code WARPOET and start saving now, and you- I have a gray Daniel. You look like you just escaped from a nurse. I feel home. like I nailed it. You are the worst. That's use it. code WARPOET at checkout for all your gray man needs. All right, welcome back, my friends. An excellent subject. You're gonna benefit a lot by it. Hang in there quick anecdotal little story. My wife and I were driving down the road about two days ago and she is just scrolling, probably hitting up the gram, whatever. But in exasperation, she kind of takes her phone and puts it down on her leg and she's like, man, everyone's just so angry all the time. And that's what it feels like social media has become. Everyone just ticked off, offended, outrage everywhere, you know, and basically yelling at each other. She's had uh, old friends that they used to hang out as kids and we were good and now who've kind of like excommunicated her because they happen to fall on different sides of a political aisle and I feel that tension too. I see it, you probably see it as well and everything's become so political and so outrageous, everyone's so angry. And when we're not angry about something, we're massively depressed when we're looking at everyone else's beautiful poster life that they're posting, you know, for you to compare yourself with and everyone's just prettier than you or more athletic or a better shooter. Uh, they're richer, they have better vacations and they have the love of their life. And what about you? And so it's just inciting envy and making us depressed and anxious and ticked off as we're just constantly tuned in to our phones through social media or the news. And what I'm not doing is shaming anyone out of their phone. I just wanted to have a sober look at what in the world is going on to basically our, our, our hearts, our minds, our souls, and all this stuff, and to be able to find out a way out, because I think we have a bit of a trap. Here's some stuff that we could be very, very upset about, just as a, to serve as an example of just how crazy it is out there. See if I can get a witness here. If you're not mad already, you could be mad about racism or sexism, socialism, communism, Trump, media bias, social media censorship, gun rights, coronavirus, hate speech, Washington pedophiles, pro athletes, political statements, job layoffs, Hillary trials, gender confusion, China, Russia, riots in major cities, BLM, Antifa, ISIS, abortion, political correctness. Holy smokes. We can't scroll more than just a couple screens without someone weighing in about the tyrant who's doing such and such. And so just as I'm looking at all this, it just, you feel tightness in your chest and your outrage. And even now my heart's beating, you know, fast, just reading this list of all these things. Uh, are you able to check out from all this stuff or are we just so nose down in it all? We can't look up. Uh, there's a funny movie, Wally. And in Wally, -E, great, great movie. There's all these just fat body gelatinous people uh, basically carting themselves around this 
uh, dystopian future. It's a cartoon movie, fantastic. And they just have all their screens, and every once in a while they bump in and they like kind of wake up and they realize there's a world around them. And I feel like we're kind of Wally, where we're just so plugged into this stuff that we are we've become real slaves to our outrage and our anger and our depression. Somebody who really helped me wake up to this recently, just to let just to see how bad I've got this, where I'm I'm struggling with this too. And it happens honestly for me, where I, I start out with a purpose and then before you know it, I've been scrolling for a while. So a man who's helped me kind of pop this bubble to cut some puppet strings and help me reclaim my life just a little bit is a guy by the name of John Eldridge. If you guys know his book, Wild at Heart, I read it for the first time like 20 years ago and it was a really instrumental book. Incredible. Can't recommend it enough. Also, there's another book he wrote, Beautiful Outlaw. Holy smokes. Or A Journey Called Desire or Epic. He's written some great books, but man, this is so important for this time. And don't worry, I'm not going to just make this a big book plug or something, but I thought it was a good enough resource that it deserved the title of the video and a strong plug. Get your life back. Folks, get your life back. Sure, we will never bow knee to the tyrant, of course, in more of a governmental way, but also let's make sure that we don't become enslaved to all kinds of stupid stuff like debt. Guys, don't be enslaved to debt. Don't be enslaved to technology. Use technology, but don't be wearing the puppet strings of media. Don't buy into the culture of outrage and offense that's just riddling every person I happen to see out there. Some sobering words, John Eldridge in this, um, in just the introduction to his book, arrested me with this one line. So not even to chapter one. And he says, my soul just can't do life at the speed of smartphones. My soul just can't do life at the speed of smartphones. And I'm like, man, that's awesome. I had the opportunity to go out and meet John Eldridge at his home recently. And I just interviewed him a bunch of, a bunch of that footage is going to be on our streaming service. It's on our War Poet show on our Warrior Poet Society network. Guys, if y'all want to check out the network, it's absolutely incredible material. It's nothing like YouTube. We've rolled out the greatest production quality that I've ever been a part of. It's really, really fun stuff. Anyway, guys, I encourage you to check it out. You will not be disappointed. Uh, there's another piece where Eldridge is talking about just basically our addiction to our phones. And again, what I don't want you to do is click off this video real quick because you're like, don't point out my addiction. You know, first step is just admit it and like, hey, check it out. I spend way too much time on my phone. So I'm a guilty party, not talking down, not shaming or anything. Just kind of like, man, we got to get it together, folks. So here we go. He says this, when your little chime glass or swoosh sound alerts you to an incoming text, do you easily ignore it? Do you regularly ignore it? Is your phone the very first thing you look at every morning? Is the last thing you look at at night when you go to bed? He says, yeah, me too. Let's be honest. We prefer distraction. The more distracted we are, the less present we are to our soul's various hurts, our needs, our disappointments, our boredom and fears. It's a short-term relief with long-term consequences. And then he goes on and he points out that it's the new socially acceptable addiction. Addiction isn't okay, but there's some that are okay. And social media addiction, he points out that if anybody messages you on any of the different ways that someone could send you a message, they expect you to be available 24-7. And that's just just not healthy because we're never unplugging. We're never getting outside our artificial environments to spend time with nature, to spend time uh, basically resting, to, to spend time being restored, to spend time in real relationships, not just digital ones. That's a really, really big deal. And he doesn't just point out the problems. He gives you some really simple solutions. I'm not going to give you all of those because I really want you to check out his book. And he says it's so much better than I ever could. But I will give you one. And he talks about the one-minute pause. Whenever you feel that tightness in your chest, that anxiety, like you're just doing so much juggling, uh, spinning plates, you feel like you're going to drop them and you're feeling overwhelmed, pause. It's one minute, get all distractions away from you, get alone, no obnoxious sounds, get outside if you can, go on a walk, but spend one minute 
just disconnecting from everything. Breathe and chill out. Let it go. He's got so many other fantastic things, little tips and tricks that have already been helping, but this is a bit of uncharted waters. We have social media and it's immediately easy to see all the benefits from it. But what we don't know how to do is live a balanced and basically a joyful, happy life where we're not just getting ticked off and then just destroying everything. That's what it looks like we're doing. We're just, everyone's getting ticked off and just wrecking everything. That's what it looks like. Everyone's ticked off. And I'm like, that's not okay. It's so easy to look around and be like, man, we are severely unhealthy. And it's not just the issues. It's our inability to calm down and talk about the issues with anyone. It's like diplomacy is failed. You know, one side's screaming at the other, the other side's screaming back, and now it's kind of like, is it going to come to arms? And that's where we're at. And some of these riots, it already is beatings and murders. It's like, holy smokes, guys, are you kidding me? Do we not have the emotional intelligence to just chill out, listen to a differing point of view, and say, you know what? agree to disagree. Let's chat about it deeper without us freaking out. Uh, and, and basically the cancel culture and whatnot. I've never seen anything like this, but we have got at least our community, our warrior poets, we're better than that. We should not be so easily manipulated and so easily enslaved, right? And so I wanted to give you just a moment of encouragement and also a moment of clairvoyance where we can actually see of like, man, we got to unplug some. This this is also a little goofy for me to say, because, hey, the more you binge on my content, the better we do. But we happen to lead. I happen to be a spokesperson for a values-based community that I care so much about. I actually give a crap about you. I really do. I don't know you, but I do know this. I know you're a lot like me. You live for higher purpose. You desire to defend others, right? You want to be a more loving person and a more dangerous person as well so we can protect. Well, you're a lot like me, and that pumps me up. And so even more important than getting more views or subscribers or anything else like that, I want you to be able to even disconnect from some of my stuff if you need to, uh, obviously, and get your life back, right? I think culture needs some strong level-headed people right now that, that can really just in the midst of a world that seems on fire still have something as crazy and unattainable as joy. <laughs> that would be fantastic to be able to keep our religion and our heads about us. That'd be amazing, amazing thing. So I encourage you folks uh, to disconnect, spend time with family, spend some time, get, take a prayer walk, read some Bible, do something to be able to just disconnect from all the noise. And folks, get your life back. Train hard, train smart, and rest well, folks. See you next time.